After the end of the Second World War, the West and the Soviet Union got a little bit competitive over basically everything. This included space. Aptly named the space race, the USA and the Soviet Union were continuously trying to outdo each other in terms of achievements when it came to spaceflight. The race to launch the first satellite into space was won by the Soviets, who launched Sputnik 1 on the 4th of October 1957. They then extended their lead by launching the first human into space, Yuri Gagarin, on the 12th of April 1961. <laughs> Not one to be outdone, however, the US managed to send three men to the moon in 1969 on Apollo 11. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming. And further continue to send teams to the moon on several other Apollo missions. Having seen the US succeed, okay, the Soviet said, Union uh, decided to pivot their focus from lunar missions in favor of developing a space station called Salut 1. It wasn't long after this that the race part of the space race between the two countries started to peter out, and was replaced with much more cooperation and a much less frosty relationship between the two nations that were once on the verge of nuclear Armageddon. But tucked away in the middle of this long saga of competition was a mission no long forgotten about, the Soyuz 11 mission. It was to be the first crewed mission to the first ever space station in history. And unfortunately for those involved, it would also lead to the first and thankfully only deaths in space. Blasting off from the Balakanor Cosmodrome on the 6th of June 1971, the Soyuz 11 mission was to be the first crewed mission to the Soviet space station at the time, Salut 1. The crew inside the Soyuz, however, weren't those originally designated for this trip. Gregory Drobolsky, Vladislav Volkos and Viktor Pasayev had replaced Alexei Leninov, Valery Kobasov and Peter Kolodin. This was due to an x-ray, just four days before the mission was set to take place, that suggested that Kubasov might have tuberculosis. As a result, the mission protocol dictated that they all had to be replaced. For Patsayev and Drobolsky, this was to be their first ever spaceflight, while for Volkov, this was to be his second and final time in space. The initial part of the mission went well, free of any issues, a rendezvous was made with the space station Salut on the first day. This was after a previous Soyuz, Soyuz 10, had attempted to dock with the station several months previously. The docking itself took the best part of four hours. This involved having to make a physical connection with the station, add electrical and hydraulic connections, and finally engaging airlock seals, before both hatches could be opened and all three cosmonauts could transfer into the space station for the first time in history. Upon initially entering the station, there was a smell of burning. This was the result of a smoldering fire in the rear of the station. As a result, they had to replace parts of the ventilation system and then wait back in their Soyuz the entirety of the following day, waiting for the air to clear. After it had cleared, the crew re-entered the station once again, this time spending 22 days inside, the longest amount of time anyone had lasted in space up to that point. The 22 days were spent mostly conducting experiments, doing live broadcasts from the space station. The only point of danger throughout their stay was a fire that broke out on the 11th day of their mission. There were considerations to abandon the station at this point, but the cosmonauts managed to last the full 22 days, and then all that was left to do was return to Earth. We're standing by for physical separation of the Soyuz MSO-9 from the International Space Station, and there it is. On the 29th of June 1971, the crew, having loaded experiments, tapes and films into Soyuz 11, and entering the capsule themselves, finally switched the manual control from the Salut 1 to Soyuz 11, and were prepared to make the final exit from the station and return home. The final undocking occurring at 6.28pm. From then, until the end of their mission, they would be inside the Soyuz, with no pressurized spacesuit at all. Only the atmosphere inside the craft would keep them alive in the time it takes them to make it back into Earth's. 
The Soyuz flew with the station, orbiting the Earth several times before it retrofired. This retrofire was slightly slowed. This would eventually cause the craft to take a steeper and steeper orbit until gravitational forces would change its trajectory from one around Earth to an elliptical one that would coincide with the desired landing location in Kazakhstan. At 10.35 p.m., the crew retrofired in preparation for re-entry. Before entering the Earth's atmosphere, both the service module and the work module had to be jettisoned. This was conducted at 10.47 p.m. And immediately the radio communications from the craft completely stopped. This was strange. The radio blackout, which was common when the Soyuz would orbit certain parts of the Earth, wasn't meant to happen at this time. Alongside this, it happened at the exact moment that the work module was jettisoned. Despite this, however, the Soyuz 11 continued on, and an almost perfect landing was made, 11.16pm on the 29th of June 1971. The automatic systems inside the Soyuz had ensured that it landed perfectly without issue. However, that only served to make the terrible surprise inside the craft all the more tragic. When the ground crew eventually reached the Soyuz, they knocked on the outside, and unfortunately, after opening it, when they got no response, found all three members of the crew inside, dead. The cause of death for all three of them being suffocation. But how? How, if everything seemingly went according to plan, did all three of the crew wind up dead? Clouded in Cold War secrecy, the investigation into why the crew had been found dead was covered up until two years after the original incident. They had clearly asphyxiated, but how? The answer seemed to come from a valve, a breathing ventilation valve that was located between the orbital module and the descent module of the Soyuz. Both of these modules were held together by explosive bolts, bolts that were designed to fire one after another when the Soyuz was conducting re-entry. But instead, when it came time to jettison the modules, both were fired at the same time. The force of the blast caused the breathing valve to open, allowing all the air inside the spacecraft to escape, and thus sealing the fate of the three cosmonauts inside. It took about 40 seconds from the bolts firing to cardiac arrest of those that had the unfortunate luck of being inside. They had no chance. <laughs> 